Hi, I'm Sam Solomon, and this is Signal Tower, the show where we talk to entrepreneurs about startups, design, and education. Today, I'm joined by John Birdsong, who is the founder of Rivalry, a sales process management software company. He is also uh, the coordinator for the Atlanta Startup Village, which is Atlanta's premier meetup for tech entrepreneurs. John, welcome to the show. Very excited to be here, Sam. Good, Thanks good. I'm excited to have you. So, um, why don't we start the program like we usually do? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, now, you worked at SalesWalloff, which was a, a tech stars company. Why don't we, we specifically kind of talk about that, that area of your, your life? Sure, sure. Um, so all last year, I, I worked at a company called SalesLoft, which is a sales intelligence company that goes out and finds all sorts of valuable information on people and companies in your CRM and scrapes the internet and finds things such as job changes, um, such as uh, news, press releases, anything that will uh, educate the sales rep. And um, a more educated sales rep is going to be one that uh, is a better sales rep. So I uh, worked there for a year and um, at the beginning of this year uh, started a sales process management software company called Rivalry. All right. All right, and kind of going back to Techstars, though, um, you, what effect did going through Techstars have on you? <laughs> um, so Techstars definitely it uh, it gave it gave me and I'd say the other folks the confidence in um, in the fact that Atlanta was doing a lot of things wrong and. We saw what what could be possible through a startup community. We we saw um, how folks like Brad Feld and David Cohen really kind of cultivated and organized organized a startup community. And we were like, this is this is how it should be. This is you know this is what makes something um, open, inclusive, uh, very benevolent and positive and and. Uh, that's something we we all really identified with. Great. So let's so let's kind of talk about rivalry uh, specifically. Um, sure. You know what gave you that that spark where you were like, I'm gonna, I, I need to start, <laughs> I need to go off and start my own company. Well, I know that I know I, I had always wanted to start one. It was just a matter of figuring out one, uh, one was the timing going to be right, and two. Um, was I confident enough in my ability to do it in the enterprise? Uh, before SalesLoft, I actually worked for a B2C startup in the education space right in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, in Midtown um, called Open Study, and spent two years there doing nothing but marketing. And I uh, had a really good idea of uh, building something, putting it in the hands of customers, getting feedback, and really trying to uh, take something that is, you know, just an idea and bring it to market. Um, but I hadn't done it in the enterprise. Uh, and I knew that most of, a lot of money is in the enterprise and um, that to be successful financially, I wanted to get in the enterprise, build something, kind of bring the B2C style and flair to the enterprise. Uh, but I didn't know anything about it. And so I went and worked right. at SalesLoft for a year. Um, and then you know, I had always, um, I had always wanted to be uh, the CEO one day. That's fair. That's that's absolutely <laughs> fair. Um, so, you know, what I guess, you know, what do you think, you know, right now, um, you know, what are your main challenges? Well, it's funny because I was talking today with uh, some folks from the Georgia Chamber of Commerce about this, but there are a lot of challenges in the Atlanta startup scene. Um, you know, one of them is hiring. Uh, for every developer, there's four jobs available, and if you're going to build a company, you obviously want the best folks. I mean, it took me four months alone just to bring on a full-time developer. Um, and I, you know, I always said a developer going after you know a top ten percent or top one percent developer, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, it, it's it's like Chasing it's like, unicorns, or <laughs> <laughs> it is, and uh, and it just takes time and it takes patience. 
and um, a little bit of, of uh, a selling, selling the idea and, and vision. But that's a, that's a big challenge, and it's not just a challenge in Atlanta. It's not just a challenge um, in the South. It's, I'd say, a bit, perhaps even more uh, in the Valley because uh, they get compensated uh, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one big one. I mean, Atlanta specifically, there's, there's a lot of things that, that we're still trying to work on. Um, now, the Atlanta Tech Village has really helped with a lot of it. One of, one of the big, biggest issues entrepreneurs were facing was uh, the lack of options for real estate. Uh, folks were playing r real estate roulette trying to, you know, they didn't want to get locked into a five-year lease, um, and there really wasn't an outlet for a small company uh, that really just wanted to go take a chance for the next 24 right. months. Uh, and the Atlanta Tech Village, um, which is a new space uh, in the uh, Atlanta ecosystem, right in the middle of Buckhead, uh, 100,000 square foot building at the corner of Lenox and Piedmont. Um, Y'all stop by. <laughs> but um, we uh, we work out of here and it's fantastic. I mean, we're... we're uh, there, you can scale a company from two to forty here, and and you still have that serendipitous uh, interaction that that'll really create uh, some positive momentum and good vibes all around. It's uh, it's it's interesting though that it's so hard to find talent. I mean, because Georgia Tech is right around the corner, and it had, I mean, it I think behind MIT they have like the best computer science program in the country. Um, it is. Uh, but Georgia Tech is, um, I, this is a, from working two years on Georgia Tech's campus and being exposed to thousands of students. They, the, the, the entrepreneurship culture and blood doesn't run in their vein. Um, and I say that as, as kind of a whole and a generalization. I mean, uh, students aren't taking a huge leap of faith and starting companies out of there like, uh, and their counterparts like MIT or um, uh, Stanford. I mean, it's it's it, the culture is different. Um, a lot of big business has um, influence there, and it's very easy to go get a, a very nice cush job out of college. Um, you know, so you can't you can't blame or doubt anything. It's just kind of the reality of 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 the culture and um, they're just not exposed to you know the the earlier stage companies so you know what do you think we have to do to to change that how does you know how do you start building uh, a culture uh, you know where entrepreneurship is the ideal yeah uh, well first is is the most simple answer to that question is success um, success breeds success, and when you see stories like uh, David Cummings at the age of, you know, I think 31 or 32, selling Pardot um, for you know about 100 million dollars, and it's completely bootstrapped and uh, created 100 jobs. I mean, those are stories that that should be shared. They should be shared with freshmen coming into Georgia Tech, uh, folks coming in. To uh, on their sixth year at, at UGA, and I <laughs> and I'm a UGA grad, so <laughs> no no shame there. Um, uh, same thing at Auburn. I mean, you know, these are folks who want to go into traditional um, southern industries, banking, finance, real estate, and the internet and technology it's not a fad it's not it's it's the, future. <laughs> the internet's not going away <laughs> it's not going away and you know it's not uh i i was telling someone the other day i was like i see folks my age i'm 28 and you know if you if you're not either technically savvy not not even savvy but technically aware you're going to get leaped and you're going to get leaped by the student five years younger than you that comes out and you know knows how to set up a WordPress site and knows how to create a following and build a community and sell and code and um, it's 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 going to be a very interesting uh, generation because I I, I'm, I think some folks who in traditional past would have been very successful but there's um, there's kind of this 
this uh, this I don't I don't know what the word to, to describe is, but there's this uh, tendency to really hold on to the past and not really um, be as uh, technolo technologically progressive as as they could be, um, and it, and it's going to hurt them. Yeah, uh, I you know I'm actually like you know thinking about that um, like. Uh, I'm sometimes hesitant to call, you know, you know, uh, Signal Tower a tech blog or a tech publication or anything like that, because, I mean, it's every tech is everywhere now. There's not a single industry that it's not going to touch. Yeah. Um, I mean, cool. it's not it's not really, you, you know, a, 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 there's not it's not really software is you know a, I hate it's cliche eating the world that's been repeated so so many times, but um, and that's. I mean, I think I think you bring up a good point because that's where there's so much opportunity, right? I mean the 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 folks in Silicon Valley are not solving some of the problems that we as the South or we as Atlanta face. Um, it's going to be up to the you know the the creativity and the the vision and foresight of of young folks like us who, who come in and see a problem that's that we face, whether it's you know I mean in reality on a farm or you know in a um, in a commercial real estate space, I mean, these these are where all my friends that I've I've grown up with, you know, they're they're they are some are on a farm, you know, <laughs> a lot of them are in real estate, and um, you know, bridging that gap and building software that, I mean, there are big problems there, and there's a lot of money there, so I mean, it's a lot of opportunity for for folks who um, who want to get a little bit outside of their comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So Atlanta, Atlanta's got, you know, huge amount of Fortune 500 companies. One of the yeah. highest concentration of Fortune 500 companies in the country. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've got to believe that there is a huge opportunity for enterprise startups. Yeah, I would say. I mean, Atlanta is a. Um, for me personally. And this is just for me personally. I would, if I were a young, nineteen-year-old kid going into Georgia Tech or or UGA, I would try to focus solely on finding a niche in the business-to-business -business space. Um, interview, you know, your dad, your dad's friends, and figure out what problems are there. And you know, there there's people who have done this. You know, Greg Benoit of um, of QGenda is a great example. 2006, um, he started a, uh, pretty much out of Excel, a uh, doctor scheduling software. And um, I mean, there, he presented two Atlanta startup villages ago. They're, I think he said, you know, do, they're doing millions of annual revenue. Um, wow. And he's 29, and it's bootstrapped, and I mean he's he's doing phenomenally well. And um, you know, from a from a company standpoint, from a personal standpoint, um, and he's putting a lot of work. But there's opportunities there in multiple industries, and it just takes a little bit of initiative and a little bit of creativity to just get going and just get started and 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 and, and get a customer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let's 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 talk about that. Let's let's uh, let's go and kind of talk about you know, you know, startups. So you know, how how do you go about getting customers? How do how do uh, new startups? How do you get your first customer? How does that work? Um, I would say that's the first thing you do <laughs> <laughs> before you build anything. Go get someone who wants it built, um, or else you'll be chasing features and product roadmaps instead of uh, instead of customers. But uh, how do you get customers? Um, it, there's there's two ways. One is to just find. One is to itch your own scratch. Um, that's the best way because you you're your best customer. Um, or there is the other way, which is going out and finding um, folks who have an itch, and it's an itch that a lot of people have. Um, and that's the first step. Uh, if you talk to 50 folks in commercial real estate or 50 folks in you know, agriculture, um, 
and you start seeing a pattern of, okay, here's a problem they have. Now, let me just think about this. Let me talk with the technical talent if I'm not one and see if something can be created to, to really uh, create that whatever task they're doing more efficiently. Um, and again, this is all B2B. And when you're 19 and in college, you know, you're not really thinking about you know, B2B, you're, you're probably, if you're like me, you're thinking about where's the next special at the bar, um, which is why, you know, at events like Startup uh, Riot, you know, there, a lot of the young companies have very B2C focused initiatives and, which is great, but it's, it's, it's probably not as practical um, or, statistically um, probable as a success as a b2b um, just just and that's just and I say that just because it's based off of a lot of the the um, characteristics of Atlanta's startup ecosystem and the South startup ecosystem uh, I'm gonna be fairly confident in saying that you know the next big social app uh, won't start out of Atlanta for at least another five to ten years. Um, we just don't have the startup density required enough early adopters. Right. Uh, right. But I hope you've proven wrong there. <laughs> the challenge is out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it can be done in Atlanta. It can be. It definitely can be. Um, but it's uh, a, a bigger bet. Um, you had an article published in the Atlanta Business Chronicle called mm -hmm. Four Challenges Facing the Atlanta Tech Entrepreneur. Yep. Um, I want to get to the, the content of that article, but I want to talk about uh, doing guest posts. And, yep. um, and you, how, you know, if someone wants to go out and A, why, why should they try and guest post and B, how would they go about doing that? Sure. Um, before I get to that, I'm just, I just got to say I'm a huge proponent of writing um, in general, yes, yes. Because of um, I, I view Atlanta as, as a as a ta as a city of about eight different towns. Uh, in '09, I worked on the mayoral election, and that entire year I spent uh, in sides of the city and areas of the city that I didn't even know. And I grew up here, um, and it was fascinating to see. And the one way that a lot of Atlantans connect is online. I, I think we're one of the most wired cities. Um, but between the traffic and just how everyone's kind of in their own little bubble, um, you know, one of the most advantageous ways to connect is, is online. And the folks who are writing and the folks who are, who are producing content uh, eventually just become the thought leaders, um, you know, out of, circumstance or out of you know just lack of of other relevant content they just you know if they're talking and no one else is talking well someone's got to listen to them right um and so take that from a startup community perspective but also from a business perspective i mean if you look at guys like gary vaynerchuk you know he's talking about the the new content marketing for doubling down is now tripling down um and there's a lot of just companies who are now becoming publishers because of you know, inbound marketing and the ability to drive leads online. Um, so any early stage technology company is going to have uh, a voice and they're going to display that through their blog. Um, but back to the question you talked about, about guest writing. Um, yeah, I think, I think a great way to, to build leads, to build credibility is to write. It's much easier to, to in an email, uh, into a cold email, say, Hey, by the way, we write a lot about you know sales process or sales intelligence, and you know here are 300 posts that we've written in the last year. Um, that that gives instant credibility, and that and that lets folks connect with you on your on their time, right. right? And so now they can sit there and they can read a couple posts. They can and and if they're valuable, that's great. And hopefully they're they're valuable to the individual or to the company, and and that they take they take some. Uh, some takeaways out of there uh, that can help their business and uh, building that credibility online is is going to be really important for not only businesses but individuals as well um, and also I mean 
I like to mix it up a lot where I'll include Atlanta into a lot of the business, um, my business posts just because I'm passionate about Atlanta and I want to see uh, the business community and the, and the startup community uh, grow quickly and fast and have tons of success. Um, and I, I think the first step for any, any company or any individual when they want to do that is just to start writing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, do you do you find that that by writing it helps you organize your thoughts? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, I, I write about four blogs, and <laughs> um, it does. But it's also, I mean, when you're when you're writing for four different things, you you, it's not like you can write every day for each one. So. Um, right. But yeah, it, it really does. Uh, I mean, Jeff Bezos is a great example of you know how he makes people uh, write what they want to get accomplished in this meeting. So it, it, there's there's some clarity and succinctness involved when you put your when you put your thoughts on paper. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, so let's let's actually go back to to that post uh, or that that guest post you had in the Atlanta sure. Business Chronicle. Um, the four challenges facing Atlanta startup entrepreneurs. We talked about mm-hmm. uh, the first one, which is you know finding talent, kind of briefly. Yep. Um, which you is, also mentioned which is very tough. I mean, it is tough. It's if you're going to start a great company, um, you got to have the right talent, and it's uh, it's going to take some sales, some set, selling skills to to get that accomplished. And then the next one is not failing fast enough. Yes. So you want to talk so, about that maybe a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. There was a um, a guy who graduated in, um, I think it was 08 from Georgia Tech. His name was Stammy. His name is Stammy, <laughs> Paul Stamatio. He works at Twitter now. And I view Stammy's path as, as an unbelievable success. Um, within the span of the last two and a half, three years, he's gone through Y Combinator. He's put everything he had into two startups. They didn't work out like he wanted to. He's now at Twitter in the growth um, division. Uh, and he is someone that got in, tested a market, validated hypothesis, and the hypothesis, um, you know, he, he, he validated if they were right or wrong, right? You have an hypothesis that, hey, if I build this, it's going to be successful. People are going to use it. People are going to come, and they're going to pay for it. Um, and if not, I want to know quickly so I can move on to the next thing. And Stammy did that twice. And there are companies here who, in Atlanta, who who fail slow. And that's to me is the death of, and not only the death of a of a startup, but it's also it's very um, it's soul sucking for for an entrepreneur, right? It's and I'd rather know within you know. 12 months to 24 months, all right, is this going to work or is it not? And um, because at the end of the day, an entrepreneur, you have the skills to go do something else and there's tons of opportunities available. Um, you know, it's not like this is back in the the late 1800s and there's only, you know, four or five companies around with the Vanderbilts and Rockefellers. I mean, there's so many niches. There's so many problems. Um, spending time uh, trying to to to, to Fix something that is not there. Um, it just doesn't make sense because there's so much other opportunity. Right. Right. Uh, so failing fast is great, um, but again, you've got to you've got to be able to kind of have no fear, um, which is tough. Yeah. Especially tough if you have a family and kids, and um, which is why it makes sense to 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 do something that you're really passionate about or that you really envision early on because the opportunity cost is probably isn't as great. Um, but yeah, failing fast is huge. If you can fail fast, that's great because if you fail slow, you know, we've talked about some of the problems, but it's, uh, it's definitely not fun and I've done it. So <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that too. <laughs> um, I wonder, I wonder if that is almost, if that's kind of a cultural thing in school, we're kind of taught that you know failing is like one of the worst things you can do, and uh, and you know that's actually not the case at all. As long as you learn something from it, uh, yeah. it's it's fantastic. 
Um, yeah, that I mean, it's definitely the traditional way of thinking, but uh, yeah. So uh, the third point is weeding through the entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there are a lot of entrepreneurs in Atlanta. Um, there's a, there especially. I mean, I remember three or four years ago. I really wanted to get involved in the Atlanta startup community. I, I didn't really know how to do it. I just went to the ATDC and started knocking on doors and figuring out, hey, what are you guys building? You know, how can how can I help? I can right. sell and I can market, or at least I think I can. Um, and every night I'd go to a different event. You know, whether it was a meetup or you know something, and it just got to the point. It took me about nine to twelve months to realize, like. It's just a lot of the same people um, and same conversations uh, and I wanted something a little bit more substantive you know substantial um, I wanted I wanted to hear problems of folks onboarding clients I wanted to hear more about uh, how they sold software to someone how they got in front of a, a huge crowd I wanted to, to learn um, something more and I just wasn't finding that. In, in some of in some of these organizations and some of these meetups, so um, so you really just got to be careful with with the folks that um, or just ask the right questions. That's the the biggest thing is ask the right questions. You, people who are doing great things, the conversations uh, tend to will likely excite you. Um, you'll be asking more questions um, because you're trying to go down the same path. Uh, right. Building a product, taking it to market, getting early customers, um, and uh, and going from there. But yes, there's a lot of entrepreneurs and there's a lot of people who just sit there and you know will tweet all day <laughs> and it gives a perception that they're doing something but I mean... They're not actually taking action on it. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's not that it's a bad thing, right? It's just a matter of what what are your priorities? What, you know, if you want to go and tweet all day, that's great. I did that for a long time. Shoot, I still tweet a lot, but uh, <laughs> but I do like uh, I do like a little bit more substance into real problems that focus ar around building and scaling uh, a company. All right, so there there's a student in Atlanta right now. Maybe he's a student at Georgia Tech. Maybe he just graduated, and he wants to get involved in the startup scene. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned just kind of going to, you know, you know, different co-working space or whatever. Going just just talking to to those to those startups. What what is the best way for someone right now to try and get involved in some way in the startup community? And and they're a student. I mean, they they're about yeah, they're a student. If they want it bad enough, I would go and um, intern at some of the uh, companies that I enjoyed meeting and that I enjoyed talking to in the Atlanta Tech Village or in Hypopotamus or in the ATDC. And I would just go and say, here I am, tell me kind of vaguely what you need and I'll go get it done. Um, that's the best way to get involved in the startup community is go and surround yourself with other startups, volunteer your time at the beginning, um, maybe with the uh, potential to get paid. Uh, I mean that's what I did and it was, you know, it was great because um, a student should want their highest priority should be learning, um, not so much. Okay, is this going to look good on my resume? I th honestly think um, resumes for technology folks will be extinct in the next ten years, five years. I mean, I don't, I don't really look at resumes anymore. I want to go look at what's their Twitter feed look like, what's their GitHub look like, do they have a personal blog, is their writing good, and can they sell? Um, yeah. I don't really know what else what else there is in terms of, um, you know, I, I, it's it's pretty just simple, uh, which is great. I think that's something that the internet's doing. It's it's really leveling the playing field of showing. All right, are you a player? or Are you not? And you can't really hide behind 
things that look pretty on the resume. Right, right. You actually have to be doing it. It's all about action. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, I, if that not you know, I'd go to some of the value keep valuable events. I'd start writing. That's what I would start doing. I would shoot. I would if I wanted to get involved in the startup community, I'd write about. It. I'm in it. Here I am. I want to get involved in this startup community. And here, the, here I'm going to write 20 blog posts about how, how, to, how to get involved in the startup community. And those, that's going to get people's attention. It'll get people's attention because you can talk about the struggles of getting in the startup community. You can connect with others in the startup community who, or other folks like you who are trying to get in the startup community. Um, that is, uh, that's what I would do. I'd go surround myself with Atlanta startup folks. I'd go work at companies that I felt were cool or had a good vibe or had a great product that I believed around or I believed in um, and that were fun. And, uh, and then from there, um, learn and, and plot when you're going to go start your own. <laughs> um. I guess I guess kind of beyond writing, you also you also organize this event event the uh, Atlanta Startup Village. Um, yes. You, can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the Atlanta Startup Village was spawned after our time at TechStars Boulder. It it was I mean I still reflect at TechStars Boulder uh, weekly and just think about. Just how amazing the community is, how accepting, and how um, just valuable people are to the overall community, and how there's kind of this uh, give before you get mentality, and um, that wasn't in Atlanta, you know. There was, um, and the biggest thing, which is which is why I was prompted to start the Atlanta Startup Village, and I say I, it's really a group effort of. Um, all of us who went to TechStars Boulder, I was just probably the loudest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's startup communities and have to be entrepreneurial led. There's just no other. There's no other way about it. Um, and honestly, the Atlanta startup community was led by, um, you know, the government, Georgia Tech, um, folks who weren't building businesses. And it, it's fascinating because a lot of that has, you know, it's, it's funny to see how irrelevant people come when folks who are going through problems that people really want to explore and learn from um, start taking a leadership role. And uh, Techstars definitely gave, I think, all of us the confidence to just say, you know what? We're just going to do this, right? We're going to go in and we're going to just we're going to start something and just see. If, and we, even if ten people show up, who cares? We're talking about stuff that's valuable. Um, and we did, and we did it with uh, with conviction and confidence, and and um, we had the first Atlanta startup village the week, uh, the week or the month we came back from TechStars, and about forty to fifty people showed up, and you know the Atlanta startup village is. It's a very simple a premise and concept that we borrowed from Techstars uh, and Boulder. They've got this meetup called the Boulder Denver New Tech Meetup, and it showcases five companies who present for five minutes what they do. Right. Um, and so we were like, "What? Well, this is awesome. We got to take this to Atlanta." Um, and so we call it Atlanta Startup Village. And um, there's a lot of pitch fests and and um, you know, he, hey, bring out your financials and tell us where you're going to be in three years, and and that's great. But really, what Atlanta Startup Village is all about is more educating the community on, hey, here's what companies are building, here's right. here's what they're, um, here's how they're bringing in revenue, here's how they're they've navigated problems that were all about to face or just faced or are facing um, and that's really valuable for an entrepreneur to know hey these guys are going through the same thing I'm gonna pick their brain I mean it's a and and one of the other big things is that you know when you have people present for five minutes um, you know an hour of you know nonstop uh, presenting and there's Q&A in between 
but uh, you start seeing all the, I, we call them theaters, um, and it's a Brad Feld terminology. I do recommend everyone buying it, startup communities and reading that. That's a great, it's, it's the blueprint of building a startup community. And feeders are folks who, you know, want to use the the startup community um, because they they see, uh, you know, that they can they can leverage it for for their own benefit, which is which is great. I mean, feeders are great. They sponsor a lot of events, but you know, it's folks like lawyers and and um, uh, <laughs> commercial real estate and and um, you know, folks who. Service providers, right? Um, and and those are great, but you start seeing, you know, for a service provider to take, you know, an hour and a half out of their night to only get about thirty minutes of of networking, um, you start seeing one the service providers who really care about the startup community, and two, um, the folks who really want to learn are there to learn and and enjoy uh, the the stories of, of the, the, the true entrepreneurs. Right. Well, John, you know, I've got, I've got like a whole list of questions I need to ask you, but we've only got like, I think like seven minutes left. Yeah, uh, keep them coming. <laughs> well, um, I, I do want to, I, I kind of want to jump and just ask kind of a few more personal questions. Um, sure. You know, what, you know, what type of things do you find interesting? Like what, just as a general rule, what interests you? Or what inspires you? Um, so what interests me is uh, technology, politics, golf, um, and Atlanta. Those are those are kind of where I, I put my time and energy. Um, but what inspires me? History, great great leaders. Um, you know, I'm watching a documentary on, on Teddy Roosevelt right now. I try to keep uh, either a documentary or a biography always consumed at some, some ways through some medium at all times. Um, so after this, I'll, I'll go and watch the end of that. But it's great. And it's, it's on YouTube. And I mean, he, he, was a, he was a great man. So I'm a documentary junkie myself, too. I, uh, it's kind of side recommendation. The Trap is on YouTube. It's a BBC documentary about um, not. It, it's a, it's about um, you'd probably like it. It's about the political and economic ideologies and how they evolved at, in the in America after in Britain after World War Two. Interesting. Three part series. Each part is an hour long. Highly it's recommended. YouTube. It's probably it's, on, one, it's one of the best documentaries I've seen in a long time. But I watched oh, that um, this weekend. That's awesome. Yeah, but talk so talk, like now. Teddy Roosevelt. Um, what? Yeah, Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt, Ted Turner, um, Steve Jobs, Richard Branson. I mean, these are all uh, kind of the the big keystones. Um, but even going down to, you know, Carnegie Mellon um, uh, or Carnegie, um, going to uh, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt. Um, that's great. I didn't even have to ask you the question. You already, yeah. you already knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, you know, are there any, we've got, there's a, there's a couple of minutes left. Are there any questions that, you know, I should have asked you or stories that you need to tell? Well, I think, I think one big concept that's, that's valuable for folks in the South uh, as a whole is, Startup communities benefit from other startup communities. Um, you know, when we had Brad Feld speak at, at, at a startup village, uh, you know, folks from Augusta came. Uh, this week, we're going, and I, when I say we, um, about five or six other entrepreneurs from, from Atlanta are taking the entire day and, and heading to Greenville, South Carolina. They've got a fantastic startup community there in the Next Innovation Center. And... We can learn from them. They can learn from us, and it's a, it's a very cool. Um, it, it's almost like this. It, it, I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost like this new. Um, it's it's. I can imagine it as as different railroad hub, railroad hubs back in the day, where you know you go to a, a community and you see 
wow, here's this, here's this group of, you know, 60 to 80 companies and they've just all kind of clustered together. Um, but making connections with those communities is important um, from a, a multitude of reasons. First of all, selfishly, uh, as customers, right? They, they can sell to you, you can sell to them. Um, and, you know, that, that's a big deal. Um, and from there, you know, also talent pool, right? I mean, the South has got such a, an incredible way of life, cost of living, access to, you know, I guess for Atlanta, um, uh, airport. Um, and there's, there's really a, a compelling reason to live in the South, but for a lot of folks and for a lot of Georgia Tech students and for a lot of, you know, technically inclined individuals, they just head out West. Um, and you know, we're, one of my goals is to, is to really build up the Atlanta startup ecosystem, build up the Georgia technological ecosystem. And that benefits the entire South. It benefits Greenville because they're going to be coming over here and we're going to be going over there, learning from them, buying from them, selling from them. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's, one of the, the big themes and is is just the 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 South as a whole, right? I mean, I, I was reading something on a company from Chattanooga today, a company from Nashville, right? I mean, there's so many pockets of just right. innovative individuals that no one knows about because everyone's kind of in their own silo and you know, we're traditionally the South isn't someone who's gonna go out and just broadcast, you know, hey, look at me, I'm the best. I've got, you know, X million dollars in revenue. Uh, we're kind of low key southern um, southern folks, and that's just our style. Uh, but there's a lot of brilliant people, and there are a lot of very talented uh, and artistic folks in the South. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, last question. You know, where can people follow you? How can they throw money <laughs> at you? What you know? How does that work? Uh, the biggest, the biggest outlet that I that I spend most of my time on in the social media realm is Twitter. Uh, Johnny Bird, J O N N Y B I R D. Uh, I check it probably I don't know, fifteen to twenty times a day, and um, it's just a great way to get news, to get you know what's going on in in technology. Um, that's one way, and um, you know we write at. Uh, the Atlanta startup community.com. So some, you know, a story that just really should be shared to folks, um, that isn't getting coverage in any of the other outlets. We try to highlight, uh, something there. Uh, those are the two main places. Uh, and of course rivalry. If you're, if you're got a company in the salesforce.com ecosystem and you've got five to 20 sales reps and are looking to, uh, improve your sales process, uh, fill out the contact form and I'll be quick to respond. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, John Birdsong, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, it's been Sam, a great show. Yeah. I'm honored to be on and, uh, I really look forward to, to more of them and, and look forward to seeing you next time you're up in Atlanta. Absolutely. Thanks. Take care.